What is happening, everybody? Welcome, welcome to sadly the last, the last serial Sunday in the series. It's heartbreaking. But listen, he's lying. He's lying. Don't, listen, don't listen, listen to him. Listen. Don't believe him. Just if you stick around to the end of the stream. Don't believe him. If you stick, stick around. If you stick around to the end of the stream, maybe we'll have some information for you. But uh, yeah, listen, here we are again, another week. And it turns out I've been sitting on my chair and haven't realized that I can make it higher for about seven months. And now I can finally put my elbow on the table. So how, how, have right. you been, how have you been this week, Phil? Tell us how life has been for you. It's been real good. Uh, it's been busy and um, doing lots of interviews and lots of content. And uh, we have a ton of stuff coming up for you. Yeah. We did, we did an interview this week and Ronald confirmed it was one of the best interviews I've ever done. Uh, with so, we got we got some cold case confessions. Yeah. We're gonna go look for bodies. <laughs> Shit's about to get lit on this yeah, channel. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're we're actually hoping to release that interview over two parts and finish it at the end of the week with a live stream interview with the killer, who has indeed um, broken these cold cases, which is wild. So stay tuned because where else are you going to get that? Nowhere. Um, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you leave a like on this stream. Make sure you share. And uh, yeah, exciting. It's exciting. And there's lots of plan lots of stuff planned. Just to give you guys a little piece, we're going to probably do two to four lives every month. So yeah. maybe like three yeah. a month. Yeah. Sometimes I tour and I can't, but yeah. we're going to try our best. Yeah. Uh, basically, touring seasons is about to start for Phil. Um, so that's why we've had these four Sundays set because it's been out of the season. And what we're going to do is juggle things around Phil's schedule moving forward. So one week it might be Sunday. Uh, one week it might be Tuesday. Uh, well, it probably won't be a Tuesday because I have a thing on a Tuesday. I have a show on a Tuesday. In fact, We'll just probably slap you on my show on a Tuesday if Tuesday's the only day you can do. Um, but we're going to keep the ball rolling for you guys because I know you guys are loving it. And we've got, I'm planning something um, for Sean Atwood and Phil as like a season, my darkest net season finale. Um, so there's loads, there's loads coming. There is absolutely loads. Uh, still no good news on an office or workspace. It is like, I am... I don't understand. I don't understand. But we're getting there. Um, I'm this close to just being like, fuck it. Let's just buy the cabin outside. We'll, we'll, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, and also, I want, I want to say, um, for those of the United States in the US, I have, I'm, I'm posting tour dates every month. You'll start to see more tour dates. For those in the UK, yeah. um, we are planning. I am planning. Once COVID's over, I'm going to fly to to London, to, to Scotland. I'm going to hang with Ron and Sean Atwood. We're going to do some live dates. So you'll yeah. get to come out and hang out with us. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, exciting. There's loads happening. But yeah, COVID needs to just fucking piss off is what it needs to do. Uh, but everybody needs to tonight get a drink in your hand, yeah. whether it's a coffee or a glass of wine, a beer, get a notepad and a pen, okay. because tonight uh, Dr. Phil is going to give you lots of lots of knowledge about what's happening, what's really happening with serial killers and sure. who really are serial killers. So, yeah. you know, um, tonight, tonight we're talking about the Cleveland Strangler and the Cleveland Strangler is not an anomaly. You're like, wow. I thought serial killers were crazy white guys. Um, we're about to blow your top, blow your mind on this tonight. So don't uh, don't miss this tonight. Get a pen and paper. Don't miss what I'm going to drop for you tonight. Going to give you tons of facts and stats and stuff. You're going to you're going to be like wow. And uh, we'll back it up. We'll yeah. Back it up with cases. Hell yeah. Uh, and like I say, there's new content dropping tomorrow and all this week. Uh, you guys will know uh, what's happening with Phil. My main channel is finally unbanned. Um, it ran on for like an extra 36 hours, according to me, uh, just so you know, like the YouTuber at it. Um, so I'm focusing a hundred percent on the deep web investigations and deep web content. And, uh, hopefully there's a couple of second channel things coming this week too, but I'm mainly going to be getting back to streaming in the evenings and focusing on the docs, which I'm sick of fucking talking about saying they're not done, but my children are back at school all week this week, which is, oh God, what six, seven hours a day for five days or four and a half days. Amazing. So something's oh. happening at the end of this week and I'll uh, let you know which particular project it'll be. But anyway, what else you got for us, Phil, this evening before we start? 
Yeah, so we're going to get into the Cleveland Strangler. We're going to talk about a case of a guy that uh, had actual, a he actually had a house of horrors. Uh, this white house that you see right here, that was his house of horrors. Um, 11 dead bodies in that home, uh, somewhere uh, in the basement, somewhere in the backyard. Some of them were really on the third floor of the house laying around. He had bodies, like three or four bodies laying in the house, you know, decomposing, which is really Let's put it this way. The whole neighborhood smelled it and oh, they blamed shit. it on a sausage factory next door. Oh, no. That It was that bad and it smelled that bad. How bad does sausage factory smell? Like, they've got a reputation for smelling real bad or something. Like, because I'm telling they you, no. Just, like, I, they just got blamed. These poor guys got blamed. The damn, sausage factory got blamed. Damn. So <clears throat> it was pretty funny. Yeah. So we're going to talk about him. We're going to get into his case and, um, I'll continue to look at the chat. I can see the chat now. So I'm going to watch the chat. Sure. And if, if I missed your question, just ask it again. Ron, if you catch a question, uh, catch it for me. I will. And then the first hour, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the Cleveland Strangler and just taking a lot of questions. The next hour, uh, the second hour, we're going to get into the myths of serial killers. And I'm, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. I haven't really talked about this too much. This will be the first time. And then I'm going to actually do a whole video on it. But we're going to break it tonight a little bit. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So exciting stuff. And uh, for those of you, I mean, I've, I am going to be completely zoned in as a viewer again. Uh, I don't know much about this serial killer and I'm excited to hear it. So yeah, whenever you're, uh, whenever you're ready, Phil, do your thing, yeah. brother, do your thing. So let's, talk about, let's talk about Anthony Sewell. Um, uh, this is one of the guys um, I have spoken to. Um, him and I have chatted on the phone. I tried, you see, I, I grew up 15 minutes from his house. Like, so this is like my neighborhood. Like, this is where I grew up. <clears throat> and so the case is very important to me. And um, as always, all of these photos and even my notes tonight are going to be scanned and put on my Patreon. So if you remember my Patreon, you're going to get all this. And I'm also going to scan a painting he sent me, which you'll be able to print off and frame. <clears throat> but Anthony Sewell and, and his, his Cleveland House of Horrors in Cleveland, Ohio, um, not far from where I grew up, my first 10 years of my life, Imperial Avenue. And um, right next door here is uh, the sausage factory, right? So they got blamed for it all. And just to show you the painting, he painted uh, on death row, Anthony Sowell painted his house of horrors on death row. There's Ray's sausage. You see the, the brown building next door and he signed it, Anthony Sowell. Yeah, that is um, like serial here, Minecraft. Right. Minecraft looking rare. art. Yeah, that's mad. And was is that I mean, is that literally I mean, is that a print or is that a copy or what what are we talking about here? That's that's the real thing, baby. That's the real thing, baby. We don't do prints here. Thing. We don't do prints here at Phil Chalmers. No, 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 that <laughs> one's a real thing, yeah. Damn. Um, so I acquired that in very very that's part of my collection. So so well was born. Let me just kind of what I'll do on these lives, I make the case a little shorter, and then what I'll do like tomorrow is I'll record this, I'll, I'll record a video with this case. Send it off to Ron. He produces it and it hits in the next couple of weeks or whatever. <clears throat> so I'll go more in depth in the video that I record, but just, just for the live and just for the live sake, to kind of chat with you guys. He was born in 1959. Um, listen to this. You want to hear something crazy? He had seven siblings in his family and then his, his, his sister or his aunt lived there and she had seven kids. Okay. They grew up with 14 kids in one home. Okay. They were subjected to physical abuse by the mother. Um, so well at the age of 10, so in 1969, at the age of 10, he starts raping his niece. Oh God. She was 10 and he started raping her. He raped her for two years every day. Oh my God. So at age 10, he's already a predator. Um, and he might've been older than that, I, I, but I think it was that. And then, um, at, at the age of 19, he left the home, went to the Marines and, uh, joined the Marine Corps. Now, so well is the kind of a serial killer, kind of like others like BTK and John Wayne Gacy. These guys can actually s succeed in life. If you take them out of their element, they can do well. And so he did well. He, um, he joined the military. He got awards. He, he, he was in the military for a few years, um, seven years in the Marines. He was discharged in, a, in, in 1985. So stay with the dates. He's discharged in 1985. Um, in 1989, he kidnaps a woman, rapes her and strangles her and she survives. He goes to prison for 15 years, gets released in 2005. And then he starts his crime spree in 2007. 
It's just he this. kills 11 women. Oof. This is the, ca the craziest cases to me. When you can kill 11 women in your neighborhood <clears throat> and you are not a suspect. So in honor of his victims, um, this is, uh, these are six of the victims. They don't get a whole lot of play. They don't really fit the media's narrative of who the victims are. Okay. Because they might, you know, they might be drug addicts or drug abusers or whatever, and the media just doesn't really care. Uh, if it was 11 housewives, this would have been a huge case. Um, but he killed those 11 women um, from 2007 to 2009. So within a span of two years or less, he killed 11 women. Now, we think he killed more. Yeah. We think he killed more and put him in the dumpster uh, at Ray's Sausage of all places. Shit. Okay. So he was um, dumping bodies in the trash at the sausage factory. Yes. Oh, right. Man. There was dumpsters right next door. So they found um they found eleven bodies in the home round. They found two in the basement, four on the third floor, four in the house on the third floor. They found four in the backyard, and then in the basement they found a human, one human skull in a in a bucket. Oh. Adding up to eleven. We think there's more. But he went to his grave with that information, and that makes yeah. me really angry when people do that. Yeah. He was arrested. A, a, a woman, Latondra Billups, was being strangled by him. He was trying to kill her, and she was crying. She asked if she can go to the bathroom, and she jumped out the, like, the second or third floor window of the bathroom, and somebody saw her. He came out to try to get her, but it was too late. He was caught. So he got arrested then. Um Ironically, Ron, he's arrested on Halloween, October 31st, 2009. Anthony Sewell, the Cleveland Strangler, was arrested. His house of horrors is exposed on October 31st, 2009. He's charged with 11 counts of murder and sent to the death, death row. Now, I've been to death row in Ohio many times. I do go there and interview other serial killers on Ohio's death row. Okay. He was one of those guys, but he would never meet with me. Now, this is what he looked like towards the end of his life. You can see that prison wasn't very good for Anthony Sewell. You see the two pictures here? Let's see if I can show yeah, you. Yeah, definitely not. He does not look like... Uh... After, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it didn't go very well for him. He ended up getting cancer, and he died of cancer um, February 8th. Today's February 28th, so he died three weeks ago. Um, I begged him to do a book with me. I begged him to talk about unsolved cases. I could not get him to talk to me. He just refused. That's wild. Well, unfortunately, the Cleveland Strangler took all the information to the grave with him. That's crazy. All I have is a painting and some phone calls with him. That's all I had. Um, so if you have any questions about him, was, uh, I'd be happy to take any was he, uh, questions was he, about him or anybody else. Was he remorseful? Was he remorseful with no. when you talked to him? No. Nah. Do you find the ones would that... remind you a lot of the Michael Madison interview that we, we did? Yeah, man. Honestly, the like you can just tell the ones that take it to the grave with them are definitely the non remorseful ones, for right. sure. Like it's right. crazy. Like I was saying to Phil that Michael Madison, he he was the first person that we've spoken to that gave me real heebie jeebies. Like right. just listening to how he spoke and yeah. But it gives me heebie-jeebies when you think about it too. I mean, but he kind of he's a little creepy to me too. The but way maybe, he talks and laughs and stuff, it's like yeah. But maybe you know? maybe it was the, because it was the first time I'd heard someone being like, "Nah, what they got me for is what all they're getting, and I'll take right. anything." That, I think that was because it was the first time I'd heard that yeah. in an interview. Maybe that's why, if you know what I mean. Um, and I know there's unsolved cases with him. I've, I've um, Basically, what I say is I, I'll tell him, like, I know there's unsolved. I don't even ask him. I just say, I, I know there's unsolved cases. And he laughed. <laughs> He's just creepy as can be. Yeah. And uh, basically said, I'm not telling anybody about him. That's wild. So, of course, he's on death row, so he could be executed. He don't want to mess with that, I guess. Yeah. I uh, wonder why they get up to the military. A, a lot of serial killers have been in the military, believe it or not. Okay. I don't know if it's they need them to feel like men. I don't know if it's because they get to kill people. I don't understand why they do that. Um, but quite a few serial killers have joined the military. Jennifer says, um, how close did he live to Ariel Castro? Very close. If you don't know the Ariel Castro case, uh, this guy had three women uh, kidnapped and kept in his basement. 
We've got a question here saying, uh, do you ever ask the, the killers um, what they would think if someone did the same to their family? And ironically, uh, and again, going back to the mm -hmm. Michael Madison interview, someone yeah. did, someone broke into, it was a family member, broke into his mum's house and stabbed him, stabbed yeah. his mum and stabbed all the kids that were there. So yep. crazy. The mother, ironically, the serial killer's mother, while I sit on, while I sit on death row, she was murder. Yeah. Stabbed, murder, stabbed to death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he didn't so, really say much about that either, did he? When I yeah, he's like, eh. yeah, he, he, he didn't was, really have anything to say about it. Yeah, I think he he strikes me as the sort of person that'll never admit to how dominated his abuse was, his his how dominated he was by his abuse growing up. I think he would rather suppress it and go out yeah. and murder a bunch of people to deal with it than ever yeah. admit, you know. Yeah, this level of abuse I, and it's crazy like he was he really strikes me as a genuinely dangerous motherfucker like so Allison Martin says um, so he started abusing at 10 I, I should say this I really we, we don't know exactly when he abused his, his niece she was 10 he could have been 10 he could have been 15 I really don't know that but it was a two year we know it was a two year span and then he left for the military at 19. So Allison, he did. Once he got out of the military, he tried to kill a woman. He kidnapped her, raped her, and strangled her, and she, he let her live. And he learned a lesson when he went to prison for 15 years. Don't let them live because they're going to tell. And so when he got out next, within, within two or three years, he, he started killing again. This time, I should say he started attacking women again, but this time he made sure they were dead Yeah. so they, so they couldn't tell. A lot of serial killers were saying that I learned my lesson. The dead don't, what is it? The dead don't talk or the dead don't tell, or the there's a don't saying. Tell, like yeah, that, this, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, just want to say as well, one of uh, your regular viewers now and one of our community members, uh, Miss Beasley has her 30th birthday tomorrow. So big shout out to uh, Miss Beasley uh, and her little boy. I um, hope you guys are having a good night. We'll definitely be doing something uh, for your birthday, Beasley. We're not having lockdown birthday madness happening by yourself so if it's tomorrow we'll get something sorted uh but yeah happy happy birthday uh, so somebody what, said what triggered him yeah yeah so yeah it's My oliver a bigger part and miss uh, yeah miss beasley and her son oliver yeah, but oliver yeah, wants to know him. um if, if there was yeah what triggered him what was his catalyst you oh, know Jesus um, Christ. oliver and anybody else listening there's a new wave of serial killers who are operating in the inner cities in the urban areas, and a lot of them are black males. A lot of them are very angry. They come from poverty, a lot of them. They're very angry. Uh, they've, been, they've been given a really bad shot, and maybe he was rejected by women. Um, he dated the mayor of Cleveland. I forgot to tell you that, Rod. He dated the mayor of Cleveland for two years, and she had been in that house after he started killing, and she said, something smells really bad. And his mother had lived there or something for a minute, and she and he said it was my mother. Yeah. But I think something triggered him. Maybe it was women, it was poverty. He's on, he's addicted to crack. He probably hates that he's addicted to crack, right? Like that sucks. Um, he got he lost his job. I mean, just everything kind of came crashing down. Do you know it's and funny? It kind of like the last straw. It's funny you mentioned crack, right? Because I got went down a weird rabbit hole of videos called Drugs Are Bad, which is just compilations of tweakers and meth heads and crackheads acting outrageously in the streets. And I, there is a certain point with crack and meth where if you've been awake for days, you're in a different world, like a completely different world. And it would be, it, it'd be interesting to see how many drug uh, you know, a drug addicted serial killers were on manic um, episodes after prolonged drug use. If you see what I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. not because it makes it any different, just because that would be another interesting see you later cookie cutter approach to serial killing yeah. again. Some of them say they're some of them say they were drug users. Some of them say they were high when they did it, and then a lot of them say they were not. So it, it, there's well, really see, no there's drug use no and being high, right? That that would be like saying, oh, I would drink a bottle of whiskey and go and kill somebody. So I'm drunk when I'm doing it. I'm not talking about that. Like yeah. some yeah. of these meths, meth users and, and crack users, like try and fathom being awake for four or five days when you live homelessly. Do, do you know what I mean? Like the, the human brain starts playing mad tricks on you. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see how many of these serial killers were, you know, thinking they were fighting off, yeah. you know, demons Someone in the said, night. Um, can you ask Phil, Ron, you're supposed to ask me, but I can read the chat. Yeah. Um, 
can you add, are, is their attitude the way they act that it's normal to kill does, does it show because through the years uh, they're like emotionally like their emotional disconnect um man does it start when they're younger i would say yes um but some of them it started here's the thing about serial killers for all of you listening you cannot say it's all the same for everybody Definitely every not. serial killer is different guys so you can't say well serial killers do this you can't say that anymore see what, what the what the so-called experts and the people who really don't know what the fuck they're talking about they try to jam everybody in jeffrey dahmer ted bundy john wayne gacy dennis Rader. listen man some you of these can. people don't fit those no, they don't you, fit those profiles but, but you can because so, of the the golden era of serial killing that I've, I keep talking about. Yeah, like you couldn't yeah. compare. You could have somebody who was on paper the same as John Wayne Gacy, but they're not getting away with killing 11, 10 boys in their area in this day and age. It's not happening. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. So it might be, oh, they've killed the same, but I guarantee you the effort that the new version of John Wayne Gacy's had to put in is way more to stay safe than the golden era of serial killing, yeah. for sure. I said, can you imagine how you feel your ex is a serial killer and you're with him? Well, um, Delmas Colbin had a fiance and she had no idea he was a serial killer. So um, that does happen a lot. Gary Ridge, Randy Green River Killer, Dennis Rader, BTK. Uh, we could talk about a lot of killers that were married, had women, you know, partners, whatever. Um, so what I want to do, let's get into some serial killer myths, but let me, yeah. you know, I mean, I really mean it to all you listening, get your pens and pads out. And I want you to write this down because this is really good. If you're in my Patreon, I'm going to scan all this. You take no notes tonight. How cool is that? Yeah. So same. if you're not in the Patreon, um, this is your chance to write this shit down. Um, before we get into the myths, let's talk about the breakdown of serial killers, right? So um, what is a serial killer? Let's start with that. Yep, um, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of people that argue with me on my page and all these other serial killer pages when I post a, I'll post a, a serial killer kills two or more, and they're like, no, man, you're wrong. Phil Chalmers doesn't know what he's talking about. It's three or more. And I say, well, the FBI changed our de definition, so now it's two or more. So if you don't know this, you got, you got to at least get the general facts here. Um, according to the FBI, a serial killer has to kill two or more but there has to be a cooling off period. Now people say, how long is the cooling off period? A few days, a week, a month, a year. It doesn't really matter. As long as there's some time to cool off. A mass murderer has to kill four people at one time in one location. Okay. Like Mr. Cho from Virginia tech, a school shooter, a church shooter. You kill at least four people at one time. I think it should be two or three, but the FBI says four and I'm going to go with it. A, a, there's a third type. It's called a spree killer. A spree killer has to kill at least two or more in different locations. So there was a guy named Andrew Cunanan that kind of made his way down the East coast of the United States. And he ended up killing Versace, this famous designer. Andrew Cunanan was a spree killer. He went on a killing spree in different locations. Yeah. Okay. So those are the three definitions. Um, so myth number one, serial killers have to kill three or more. That's wrong. It's two or more. And you know, the different, different the different countries have different, um, like different ways of assigning what a serial killer is, or is it like a national, you know, law that sort of. I would think it. a lot of countries follow the FBI in the United States. Yeah. I mean, you uh, would, you, you would think that cause you're a fucking American. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really think you know why you know how i know that round because a lot it's of best these guys country. Talk, america is mother it's best country i am united states citizen okay these people best get land. <laughs> the fbi gets contacted by people from all over the world so yeah, 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 i don't know sure. i don't know but no I, but um, it would make sense like it would make sense do you know what i mean uh, here's the whole thing not that I never would think that USA is better than anybody else, but we have more serial killers than anybody else. So we probably should be more experts at it. Right. Yeah, well, this is it. Um, this is it. Myth number two, ready for myth number two, get ready people. especially you guys in the UK, listen closely. Okay. Serial killing is an American thing. Nah, that's what I'll do. I'll throw it out and see what they say in the chat. Serial killer is an American thing. Like people think, you know, if you have serial killers, uh, it's in the United States. Nah. Okay. So do we have serial killers in other countries? Hell yeah. Are there a lot of them or not as many? 
you know, what do you think the breakdown is? If America has the most serial killers, so I'll give you that, we have the most, but how much more? Well, that's a good point. I mean, I, I'm assuming you would work it out in the same way as you'd work out, you know, anything, parts per million. So per yeah, million. It's, 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 yeah, it's per capita, right? Yeah, it's per capita. Yeah. <clears throat> but let's just talk about sheer numbers, Ron. Okay. The United States had 2,700, has, has had, that we know of, 2,715, 2,715, 2,715 serial killers so far in the U.S. Damn. All right? That's a lot. There, there's 4,007 serial killers that we know of around the world. So the United States has 67% of the serial killers. So some people, some people might think it's like 95%. You know, you have like almost all of them. Um, not really, man. Um, there are serial killers in all countries. No, no, uh, the, it back. You can't just be like, oh, we've got like 67% and then be like moving on. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, no. That's no, give you some, I'm give you ridiculous, some Phil. Right? That is an astronomically disturbing we figure. Have a lot of, we have 330 million people that's, here. That's fucking like one in three. One in three, Phil. <laughs> one in three. Anywhere in the world, one in three. Here's your next, here's your next eight countries. Ready? Okay. Uh, England has 142. South Africa, 110. That's, Italy, Italy, 94. That's fucking lords. Japan, 90. Canada, 82. Germany, 75. Australia, 74. Russia, 69. I just threw this in here because Ron would feel bad. Scotland, yeah. 13. 13. Yeah, yeah. We just know how to not get caught. And plus, nobody gives a fuck what the neighbors are up to. You could like be shooting <laughs> up your whole family and it would just be like, shut the fuck up. I'm on the night shift. Do you know what I mean? How many people are? How many people live in Scotland? What's your population? Oh, uh, wads, wads. Oh, 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 Let's oh, have a look. Let me just totally pull. Let me. I'm definitely not googling this. What's the latest numbers? Just to give you some comparison. Um, uh, if anybody's really good at math in the chat, uh, do uh, five, America five, twenty-seven five and fifteen and a half, five by, and a half by million. Five and a half 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 million. So more. we're at, we had 330 million, 2715, you're 5 million, yeah. and you have 30. So just a comparison. Wait, 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 wait. Give me the math again. So, so 2715 divided by 330 million yeah. uh, citizens. 300 million. Like, like, I don't like all those decimal points. So I'm, I don't want to, my brain would hurt. I need to get a pad and paper. Do you just carry on talking? <laughs> no, no. Just wait. No, for, no, just don't. I have to. <laughs> no, I have to do the math. Okay. You go back to this. I need to do the math. Okay. Are you doing that? I'm going to go on to myth number three. Yeah, do that. Uh, myth number three. Here's another one for the global people. People think the United States is the most violent country in the world. Like the United States has the highest homicide rate in the world. So in the chat, now I really I don't want you guys to Google before you go in the chat. Just throw in the chat who which country or which two or three countries do you think has the highest homicide rate in the world? Do you think it's the United States? Do you think it's another country? Okay. We that's a tr you you're a sneaky bastard. Right, because are we count? Are we talking about developed Western world, or are we talking about madlands of Brazil? Like what we're we talking about here? Everywhere. Yeah, we're talking everywhere. Okay, because I'm going like Brazil as the number one. Like Brazil is just Brazil like, has a lot of drug uh, deaths, I believe. Mexico yeah. comes in. Mexico, <laughs> South Africa, Africa. I mean, nice. yeah, I have Brazil. All right, good. You guys are doing good. Somebody said I've not been to I've not been to Glasgow. Glas Glasgow. Oh yeah, obviously Glasgow is the uh, like we all know, right? Scotland's got a population <laughs> of 150 million, and we just keep it stum. Okay, all right. Listen, all right, we you guys are doing good. Let me give you the top three. Ready? Okay. Number one. Drum roll. El Salvador. Whoa. Number the two. Human Resources oh, Department shit. requires I the wrong button. that I be available. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Number two, Honduras. What the fuck? Number is three. Wait, somebody what, had it right in the, the chat. What the fuck Africa. is Honduras? Africa. Africa. Fucking Honduras. So if you look at all, look around. If you look at all the countries, the United States is right about halfway, fifty percent. About the fiftieth yeah, percentile. Yeah, but you also made yourself well bigger than Africa on the map and can't really be destructive. Right, so it, it is per capita. You can't really be yeah. trusted with statistics as a as a nation, right? Because I've seen the map. Murder. I've seen the map where in El, Sal El Salvador, El Salvador, and Honduras. Things are off, man. Things there are. There is off. a lot of murders in Mexico too. 
Honduras, Central America country with the car. What? I've never heard of this entire country. Never heard. Of <laughs> never heard of this country. That's why you're on here tonight. You're learning. Don't go there. They kill people. Hang on. What's the population of Honduras? <laughs> Everyone Googles. Yeah, I know. Everybody's Googling, but I, I get it. You can Google. Somebody said they were in Honduras two years ago. Glad I'm still alive. That's pretty funny. Oh, I need um, to... number, Africa's number three. Africa's number three. Honduras. Uh, I'm so triggered by my lack yeah, of geography. Switzerland. Dan said Switzerland. Switzerland's pretty safe. They have the occasional <laughs> mass murder, but not very often. Dan, what is your experience with Switzerland? Like, what happened to you in Switzerland? Why would you say Switzerland? Like, Dan. Oh, no, 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 it isn't. Nor no, I'm thinking of Norway. Sorry. It's, oh, it's the wrong country. Yeah, um, okay, so that was your myth number number uh, three. Myth number three is the United States is not the most violent country per capita, although you think it is because you hear the media. Uh, we're about 50, 50th percentile, so if you take all the countries, we're halfway. Okay. Myth number four, here we go. Wait, but you, what he didn't it. tell you is above America is just third world nations. They are the very Stop. first developed country, Western world. This is this is how America does it. They're like, oh, let's put all the countries in and we're only halfway down it. No fucking shit, mate. That's because the first put half. All the, countries in? all the fucking countries above it are lawless as fuck. All the countries in. Yeah, listen. Talk about don't, all the countries. Don't be, listen, I'm here as the voice of reason, okay? Right. I'm just saying. Okay, let's get back to, let's okay, get back so, to business. <laughs> all right, so myth number four. A lot of people think the heyday of serial killers, and we, I've seen memes about this, right? The heyday of serial killers was the 1970s in the United States. So, like, the 1970s had way more serial killers than ever before. Have the, you ever heard that, Ron? That there's memes about it. Dude, okay. I, I've, I've, I've not, maybe not heard about it, but I refer to the golden era of serial killing. That's how I refer it in my head, because it was a perfect storm for what they wanted to do. Did you, did you, did you see what way, I mean? By the way, my research tonight is, comes from a college called Radford University in, in Virginia who has a serial killer information center. And they've been studying serial killers for decades. It's, yep. it's amazing. It's amazing. So this, these numbers are, uh, I'm not making this shit up. Yeah. I just okay, to, here we go. Just to be clear, go. my information comes from Google because I'm a useless bastard. Okay. Just to be clear. <laughs> so here we go. Ready? So you look at, let, let's look, let's look at the curve here and let's see if the seventies are the deadliest. 1960s in the United States in the 1960s decade, we had 173 serial killers. Okay. In the 1970s, we had 531. 1980s, right? Listen, around 1980s, 689. 1990s, 609. So the 80s and the 90s were they had more serial killers in the 70s. Well, yeah, that 2000s, makes... 2000s, we've dropped down to 331, and we just finished up the 2010s, 87. Why the decrease? Good question. I'd like to see what you guys think. Technology has, has improved. Cameras everywhere. DNA. Uh, people are getting longer prison sentences. They're not being released as much as they used to be. Children are no longer playing unsupervised like we used to back in the day. People are not hitchhiking like they did in the 60s, 70s, and even maybe 80s. So people have gotten a little more crime prevention focused and Still, in my opinion, it's not enough. Um, that's, that's what I do for a living. Trying to get people to really think more like uh, in condition yellow to be safe, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, somebody said cameras, easier to get caught. Um, some people don't get caught, but, but many do. Um, uh, Salvador, is, yeah, I think MS-13 might be active there. I think you're correct on that. Uh, Switzerland's very safe, said Dan. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think it is too. I think it is too, yeah. What else we got, guys? What are your thoughts on that? Um, so the numbers are down. Now, I think there's at least 50 to 100 active serial killers that are going around. A lot of them are not been caught. In the 2010s, we know of 87 that were caught. You understand, if you want to back up a little bit, guys, and look at the numbers in the United States, we have about 12,000 murders a year and 3,000 go unsolved. So in 10 years, in a decade, there's 30,000 unsolved murders. So can you imagine how many people are killing those people? 
If there's 30,000 unsolved murders in a decade, how many serial killers might be currently getting away with murder? Like Delmas Colvin got away with it for 24 years. Yeah. Clark Gibson got away with it for 24 years. You know what I mean? Some of them get away with it for a very long time. Some of them never get caught. Yeah, some of them are going to get, obviously, get taken out by natural disasters, you know, car crashes, disease, all that kind of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. You know, nature's just going to run its course. I wonder yep. how many weird diaries under floorboards have been yet to discover that are like the secret confessions of these people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah. I also want to thank everybody that's on here today. Um, Thank you so much for your support. You're watching the videos. You've subscribed. We're, we've hit 4,000 already. We're on our way yeah. to 5,000. We can't wait to hit 10,000. Then we're going to be looking towards 100,000. And um, appreciate all the nice comments. I'm going to sure. start slowly commenting back to you guys. I've just been really slammed with content. Mm. But uh, I just want you to know I read your comments, a, a lot of them, and I appreciate the love and the support. And you guys are great. Ron support uh, appreciates your support, and so does Sean Atwood. Appreciate that. Um, uh, what else we got? I need some good serial killer questions, or let me get your comments. All right, all right, all right. We've got a lot more content tonight. Um, so let's talk about this one. This is a this is a biggie, guys. This is a biggie, and I need you to write this down. This is why I do what I do. This is why I travel and train law enforcement. This is why I train. I speak at the FBI conferences. Sure. This is why I do what I do. Because serial a serial killer myth number five. The profile of a serial killer is a white male in his mid-20s. I think all of you would agree with me in the chat. That's kind of what we think serial killers are. They're, they're, they're white males in their mid-20s. If you were to ask anybody, even a seasoned law enforcement officer, they would probably tell you, what's your profile of a serial killer? They'd be like, male, white, I don't know, 20s, 30s, maybe. That's probably what they'd say. Okay? Keep that in mind. Um. So we, if we use that profile, Ron, yeah, we're really out hunting white males in their mid to late twenties. We would only arrest twelve percent of serial killers. Okay, but if we That's were, how far off that profile is? But if we were to look at the the seventies, what are the statistics there? Is it mainly white males that are being arrested back then and that have sort of set this mindset in motion? Yes, people are stuck. Like I said, with Ted Bundy, okay. John Wayne Gacy, they're still stuck in that mindset. Okay. And they haven't come off that mindset. Do you think that, that's because they find comfort in that mindset? Do you think having a cookie cutter is comforting to the human condition? I mean, unless you're really diving into these cases and talking to lots of killers, you really don't get a good view of what's really happening now. Of course, yeah. Right? Just read history books. If, if any if any y'all in the chat are just reading history books of serial killers, I'm going to write a book called The Ten Myths of Serial Killers. I need to get this material out in a book form, but those books aren't out there right now. So here's the I want to finish this up and listen closely. Okay. If we use the if we use the the profile, a serial killer is a, a white male in his mid to late twenties. We miss eighty eight percent of serial killers. That's how they get away with murder. Damn. Why? Because we're hunting for the wrong people. Okay, so from 1990 to 2015, Ron, 25 years, from 1990 to 2015, remember that? Okay. We, we got some data, 25-year data. If we use that profile during just that time, we only catch 7% of serial killers. Damn. Okay? That's crazy. They might think that's a problem. This is why I do what I do. This is a real problem. That's a real problem. And, and here's why. Yeah. Here's why. Here's why. Most serial killers are black males. They're not white males. They're black males. Majority of serial killers are black males. A lot of them start in their 30s and 40s. So we're looking for the wrong people. The average age of, of a first kill of a serial killer uh, of, of, four, of all 4,000 was 27. But things are changing now. Let me give you a little bit of background and some history. This is interesting. Write these names down so you can all Google them later and get some good research and you have your mind blown. Let's talk about the youngest serial killers ever. There's a guy named Robert Dale Segee. Robert Dale, S-E-G-E-E. -E -E. He started killing at the age of nine, and he killed 179 people. Bear with me. 
he started killing at nine, killing individuals, like another, another little boy he played with, little girl. And then in 1944, um, he set a, a circus tent on fire and killed 175 people in Hart, He's from Hartford, Connecticut, but he, he set a circus tent on fire and killed 175 people. Damn. He was arrested and uh, he was born in 1929. So when he set the circus tent on fire, 39, he was 15. Um, he confessed in 1950 when he was 21. He was sentenced to 40 years, paroled in 59. He was paroled at the age of 30. So he did nine, uh, he did nine years of a 40 year sentence. Here we talk about this. We talk about this all the time, Ron. Why do we have murders? Because we keep letting killers out way too early. He died a long old age. He died at 72 in 1997. So one of the youngest serial killers ever. Wow. Robert Dale Segui. Wow. From Hartford, Connecticut. Let me give you another one. He was nine. 12 year old boy named Jesse Pomeroy. They called him the Boston boy fiend. Born in 1859. He killed at least two tortured nine more suspected of more murders. He started killing at the age of 12. And in the definition today, he killed two or more with the cooling off period. He was a serial killer starting at the age of 12. He was arrested. And even though he did these crimes at the age of 12, they sentenced him to life in prison and he died in prison. Damn, that's, yeah, that's probably a bit more on the ball with how they should have treated Gacy right, and right. other people. And a little more, a little more modern day here, there's a guy named Craig Price. His nickname is the Warwick Slasher. The Warwick slasher, Craig Price, started killing at the age of 13. He went to one of his neighbor's houses and stabbed a woman to death at the age of 13. Her name was Rebecca Spencer. He took a two-year cooling off period, went to another house, and stabbed three people to death. Stabbed them all 50 to 60 times apiece. Oof. He stabbed a, a woman who was 39, her 10-year-old daughter, and her eight-year-old daughter. So his, his killing spree was he killed one, took a two-year break, killed three more, killed four people. The Warwick slasher, Craig Price at the age of 13. Robert Segui at age of nine. Jesse Palmer at age 12. Craig Price, age 13. Now, how old do serial killers, what's the oldest serial killer? Here's another one. Write this name down. All right. Ray, Ray Copeland. Ray Copeland, C-O-P-E-L-E-N-D. Oldest known serial killer. He was killing uh, between the age of 72 and 75. Damn. He had a, he had a farm 72 in Missouri. 72 and 75? That's when he started killing people. Yeah, yeah. What? He had, a, he had a farm in Missouri. He would take in drifters and farmhands, and he would kill them. Damn. Probably, buried, probably buried him on the farm. He was the oldest guy ever on death row. Um, he went to death row... At the age of 75, uh, and he died in 1993 at the age of 78. So he didn't really last long on death row. He died three years later. He was not executed. He died of old age. So the youngest serial killer in America, age nine, the oldest, Damn. 75. That's crazy. Nine is crazy. But Back to the facts. Myth number six, serial okay. killers are mostly white. Listen, when I was growing up, watching all the 70s documentaries, I thought serial killers were white too. And back in the day, they really were. Somebody wants to say hello to Ron Swanson. Oh, oh yeah. Your buddy right here. What's happening? Oh, she is What's just the on? cutest. You see the TV? She is you see just the cutest. Hi, buddy. Look at it. Hi. She's hey. like, what the heck is all this stuff going yeah. on here? <laughs> she's just so cute, man. That's Daisy, she's and if you catch so our cute. channel, she's she's a star of the Delmas and Daisy show. She is. She is. Check out. She just told my wife I need to go say hi to Ron Swanson. We're like, okay, whatever. Got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> she talks, man. You heard her. You heard her in days, the Daisy Wendy and Delmas show. Has feelings. Wendy said she has feelings for you. Good. She's 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 in my heart. Wait, wait, wait. What? We said what? Daisy has feelings. Oh, I mean, yeah. Daisy has feelings for <laughs> yeah, you, not my yeah, wife. Yeah, of course, of course. Damn. Damn. She's yelling, she's yelling Daisy, not yeah, me. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, let's talk. Let's talk race of American Syracuse. This is very important. Okay. Uh, the media. The media will never share this. The media will not let me share this. Okay. The media shuts me up when it comes to this. They will not let me listen to. It. They. They just. They just shut me up. Like I will lose a show over this if I say this. Okay. But here's the deal. When you're helping people catch bad guys, when you care about victims, when you don't want to see children being murdered, you tell the truth and you teach people what's going on even if it might not be politically correct. So here we go, from the, from the 1990s to today, so around that same number, 1990 to 2015, 25 okay. year span, you with me? Yeah. In the 1990s, 48% of, 48 of serial killers in the United States were black and 42% were white. Damn. So in the 90s, it was almost close to being even, Mostly white, mostly black. We had 8% Hispanic and 2% Asian. And were they all men? These are men. And it, yeah, but is, is there... I mean, all men. No, like, like 92% are men. 92%. Well, I think, yeah. I think what we should do is we should plan like a ladies, lady killer night uh, mm -hmm. for an up-and-coming show. I think that would be really interesting. Um, most of them are men. Most of them are men. Yeah. So let me stay with me, man. 2000s. Let's go another decade. 2000s. Okay. 57% are black 31% are white. Now we've got to, we got to jump. It's jumped to 57% black, 31% white. Hispanic, 11%, Asian, a half percent. Okay. Jump up to the 2010s, the last decade we have, 2010s. Okay. 58% black, 32% white. 9% Hispanic and half a percent Asian. Damn. But what I told you earlier, Ron, if you go from 1990 to 2015, you just take that 25 year period. Yeah. Here we go. 52% are black and 38% are white. So if we think that all serial killers are white males, or we think most are, you know, and the reason we do that is because the media doesn't report on black male serial killer crimes. They don't report on these cases because they don't want to seem racist. Okay. And I can them and say, wait a minute. I think it's racist if you don't talk about it because... There are children out here being murdered. There are women being murdered, women of color, you know, black women, black children, Hispanic women, Hispanic children. I think we need to talk about this. Yeah, it's 2021. It's 2021 and you're a white heterosexual male, so you're not allowed an opinion. All right. 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 <laughs> uh, so it's so here's what people crazy. say to me. They're like, they're like, um, uh, you know, are there any black serial killers? Uh, hundreds. So for those, of you that for those of you that watch this later, you can write all these down and pause your video because you probably can't take all these notes. Uh, Sam Little killed 93. Henry Lewis Wallace, 11. Anthony Sowell, the Cleveland Stranger, 11. Damn. Delmas Coleman, he's been on our show. Chester Turner, I talked to him last week, the Southside Slayer. Derek Todd Lee, the Baton Rouge serial killer. Paul Duracell from Florida. Lorenzo Gilliard, the Kansas City Strangler. Craig Price, the Warwick Slasher. Mark Goudeau, the baseline killer from Arizona. Ray Dandridge, Eugene Britt from Indiana. Ivan Hill, the I-60 killer. Damn. The Grim Sleeper out in California. Harrison Graham, the corpse collector. Anthony McKnight, Shelley Brooks, Charles Carter, the bedroom basher. The Englewood <laughs> Strangler, the I-57 killer. Michael Madison, he's been on our show. Matthew Macon, I used to talk to him all the time. Cleophus Prince, the Claremont killer. Lorenzo Fain, child killer. Theotis Hill, talk to him, talk to Lorenzo, Maury Travis, and many, many more. Yeah, who are that's unknown crazy. to the general public. But guess what, folks? On this channel, you're going to learn about all serial killers. So we are going to talk to them, and we're, we'll be the only ones that ever talk to them. I think, uh, I think that's quite scary when a false sort of narrative is painted by the media's fear of being called a racist over yeah. reporting crimes that are just occurring. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and when, when they're confronted, like sometimes people confront the media, like, why didn't you report this case? Like there was a guy killing these women in, in, in Florida. I'm blanked out on his name right now. Um, I'll get it. But he was killing women after woman in the Southern Florida town. And he got arrested. He got arrested and it was on page nine of the paper and somebody confronted the paper saying, what the hell? This should be front. This would be front page news. Yeah. Why is it on page nine? And they said, 
uh, black males get a bad rap, so we didn't want to give them a- any more of a bad rap. And we were like, but people are dying. Yeah. They're being murdered right now. That's crazy. So, I mean, yeah, that, that guy I mean, is crazy. A, that guy ended up going to a mental institution and he died. He was one of the deadliest serial killers in American history. And I should know his name, but just like everything else, I'm blanked out on it because he just doesn't get any. That's crazy. Get any coverage at all. Yeah. Because even when I think about it, before I met you, the only serial killers I could even name were white dudes. Do you know, no, like most people, when I, when I ask people in my training, I'll say, raise your hand without, now, by the way, if I'm, I'm in training run, nobody can in Google on their phone. I tell them, don't put their phone, don't put your phones up, raise your hand, name a black serial killer. And what I do is I whisper in someone's ear and I say, they're going to say these two people and they do every time. They'll say Wayne William. They don't even know their name. They'll say the Atlanta child killer. And then they'll say the DC snipers. So then I ask him, I said, okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll whisper in the guys here. They're going to say the DC snipers, Atlanta child killer. And they're not going to know their names. So they, uh, they say Atlanta child killer. What's his name? I don't know. They don't know Wayne Williams name. DC snipers. What's their name? They have no idea. John Allen Muhammad. Like, you know, they don't know that he, he was executed. Um, so that's all people know. It just doesn't get coverage. And it's scary because if you don't know this information, now listen to this, how deep this is around. You don't know this information. You're messing with a black male or Hispanic male or whatever. And you don't know that they're potentially serial killers. I posted a case on my FaceTime or on my uh, Facebook and Instagram the other day a beautiful lady was talking to this guy who was a black male and they were going to meet and have sex. Her last text to him, you know what it was? You're not a serial killer. Are you? No, he was. That's, it's and he so, killed him. It's so wild. Like, but she does that. If that was big news and we said, everybody's a potential serial killer. Get wake up people. You wouldn't have, you'd have a little bit of people being a little more careful, but they're like, Oh, well, those are, those are the crazy white guys. Those are the serial killers. And if you do that, that mentality, it's dangerous. And, and so that's one of the things I'm trying to do is educate people. Okay. I'm going to, so I can, uh... any good questions about anything so far? Yeah, yeah. I'm just grabbing you one from Dan. I'm trying to look too. Uh, hang on a second. Can you please ask for that comment? Again? Could it be? Hey, Ron, I said, Ron, stop interrupting Phil. Yeah, yeah. Now that now that you've stopped talking, Ron, go, come on, Ron. F- go and oh, f- wait a minute. Elizabeth comes up with one I'm going to talk about in the next few weeks. The Taco Bell Strangler. I forgot nice. him. Nice. Oh no, he's not. Wait, he's he's on here. Henry Lewis Wallace. Uh, yeah, I just want to. And I just want to say, uh, woke dealer, go and uh, suck your mum. How about that, mate? Uh, <laughs> A fucking idiot. Right. Anyway, so where are we? So yeah, yet? Ron, the Henry Lewis Wallace has a great nickname, the Taco Bell Strangler. He killed eleven people in Charlotte. Listen to this, Ron. He was the manager of a of a fast food place. Yeah, he was the manager. He's a great guy. Everybody loved him. I'm just He's looking. For, I'm just looking for questions. Sorry, I'm. That's what what I'm facing. Okay. Yeah, facing that's this okay. Way, good. I'm trying to grab you some stuff, mate. Just so you know. Uh, are there white serial killers killing black women? Probably. Um, very likely, I would imagine. Say that one more time. Uh, is there a lot of white serial killers killing black women? You know, I didn't mention that in this little session here, but let me explain that to you. This is very important. Why do I talk about black serial killers? Because there's, Here's why. there's more of them. Here's why also. Okay. A lot of people are woke all of a sudden about racism. All of a sudden, everybody's woke about racism, right? I am not, I am not woke about racism. I've thought about racism and been, and been cognitive of it for 35 years. And it, a lot of it drives my work. Like, I represent everyone, okay? And I am passionate about those who the media and sometimes law enforcement doesn't care about, whether it's drug-addicted people or people, you know, black Uh, victims or black children or black females or Hispanic children or Hispanic females, they just don't get the same coverage as white victims. So because of that, I'm passionate about this. Uh, If black, listen to this, Ron, if black victims are murdered, 
they're murdered by a black serial killer. Why? White serial killers kill white victims. 95% of white serial killers' victims are white. So white serial killers mostly kill white victims. Very few people, Ridgeway killed a black female, um, Dahmer killed a couple black males. It's rare, okay? On the flip side, black serial killers kill 40, 40 some percent of their victims are black and 60% of the victims are white. So they even kill more white victims than black victims. But if anybody kills black victims, it's black serial killers. Ta-da! That's why I'm passionate about it. It's crazy. Because I care about all victims. That's crazy. Like, that is a mind-blowing statistic, like, if I'm being honest yep. with you. It's um, true. Here's another one from uh, McGabby. Most of the serial killers caught in Detroit in the past few years didn't get much coverage at all. I'm curious about the guy that used his car. Do you know uh, what McGabby's talking about there? Um, McGabby, are they black male serial killers? Because there's been a bunch arrested recently in Detroit and um, Chicago and northern Indiana. Um the bottom line, if they are, they're not going to get much coverage because they're black males. Um, it also depends on who their victims were. I hate to say this, but some victims don't get the coverage that other victims do. Um, think about it. When you ever see missing children or a big unsolved case, it's usually a white female or a white victim. It's very rarely a, a minority. And that might be why you're not seeing these cases. We just, we just arrested a serial killer in Dallas, Texas, who killed like 28 elderly patients in Dallas. Nobody even knows the case. Damn. He's a black male. Black male got no coverage. That's crazy. Somebody was asking oh. earlier about doctors. Is, do you, have you ever spoken to, in fact, I'm going to combine this. Have yeah. you ever uh, interviewed or known, or can you talk about any serial killers who have worked in the emergency services? So let's say yes. um, ambulance or doctors, police force or fire. Yeah. Um, could you tell us one of each? Have you got? Could you tell us one of each? Yeah, there is a there is a certain type of serial killer that kills uh, patients, whether it's a nursing home or a hospital, and so anybody can go online and Google you know, hospital serial killers, nursing serial killers. Uh, there's both male and female. If you have your female serial killers, they usually kill their, their relatives, their spouses, their children, or they kill patients. Um, nursing, um, nursing home. I don't know what you guys call it in your countries, but nursing home, you know, old folks home or whatever you yeah, call yeah, it, yeah, or, yeah, or, the, yeah. or the hospital. Um, you know, I, I don't know a lot of these off the top of my head, Ron. Yep. But there's a lot. They're in Ohio. They're all over the country. You have you have Shipman who's, yep. in, who's, who's in a different country, I yeah. think. He's uh, but, he was uh, from he was from this country. That yeah, was, that was yeah. He's, he's he killed a lot of people. Uh, let um, me just let me just double check something on Shipman because Yeah, this is yeah, but Har yeah, but this is a weird one, right? Like Harold Shipman was did you not yeah. did you not kill himself? Was he not connected? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that question, Elizabeth Ashley. I don't know that. <laughs> I'm just going to throw something out there, right? But I have it on. I don't. I'm. I'm pretty sure I have it on good authority that Shipman was linked to something to do with military and Iraq and the Gulf War. <clears throat> Interesting. And I've got a funny feeling he was the fall guy for a massive government something where they were testing and a bunch of bodies needed to be accounted for i'm just saying okay. I'm just... somebody said um why don't we count gang members we don't count gang it's members motive, isn't it? we it's... don't count bank robbers yeah it's more we... of an intention sorry phil and you go yeah you go. yeah we don't count mafia hitmen um the reason is there there's a reason why they're killing gang members kill because you're on the wrong street wearing the wrong color they're not really killing because they really love it. Now, they could love it, but it's a little different than a serial killer. Um, if we counted gang members, we'd have a lot more serial killers. Um, bank robbers, Bonnie and Clyde killed multiple people. They're not serial killers. They were killing to get away from robbing banks. Um, hit men get paid to kill people. Don't really count them. It's, it's for money. So that's why we don't count those types of killers. At least the FBI doesn't. Oh, somebody killed eight babies in the UK. Somebody said, yeah, a nurse. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's a random, here's a conundrum question for you. Yeah, what is the on, definition? Let's... What is the definition of someone who has killed two people and then got caught, but they killed people who are not family? So they would be a serial killer, right? 
a serial killer. Yeah. If they're it, 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 the question would be around, did they kill them all at one time in the same house in the same room at the same time, or yeah. did they kill them with the cooling yes. off period? Yeah, the exactly. cooling off period. They are a serial killer. If they if they kill two people like their parents in a house, we call those people family annihilators. Um, or you just carried out a double homicide. Yeah. Oh, Anybody that's else? a great question. Okay, if you could interview any serial killer who's uh, let's let's say who's alive and say who's dead. Okay, in <laughs> fact, in fact, let's just hit you with a fantasy dinner party. Okay, so you can have the fantasy dinner party with four interviews. Okay, of your yeah, give four. Me two, give me two alive and two, two alive, dead. Yeah, two alive and two dead. Who is your fantasy serial killer interview dinner party? Well, I mean, I've talked to Charles Manson. I've talked to BTK. I've talked to a lot of these guys. So um, my two that I would, that are alive today that I'll, I don't think I'll ever get to interview because they no longer talk to the public or to anybody outside, Ed Kemper and Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, and Ed Kemper, the co-ed killer. Two dead. Um, I think it's pretty evident by what you see behind me, John Wayne Gacy and Ted Bundy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ed Interesting. Ge Ed Gein would be one crazy ass dinner guest as well. <laughs> yeah. Probably have a body with them in the car. Yeah, as long as it wasn't oh, yeah. uh wasn't as long as it wasn't crafting time with Ed Gein, I think you're fine. Do you know what I mean? That's yes. uh, that's not an Etsy store that ever needs to exist. Uh, I'm gonna um, let's keep up here. Here's another one. Myth number seven. There are no warning signs of serial killers. They just kill out of the blue. There's no way you could catch them. There, there's no warning signs. And the question, the answer is that that's not true. There are things that serial killers do that you can catch them, the signs, right? Yeah. Uh, so Have warning you... signs, causes, triggers, co common causes of serial killers, unstable home, abuse at home, physical, sexual mental abuse, no loving or nurturing relationships, physical ailments, something's wrong with them physically, or they get a head injury like Ted, um, John Wayne Gacy got hit with this in the head with the, uh, with the swing. That's right. Yeah. Playground. That's right. Yeah. In the playground warning signs ready for the warning signs, bedwetting up until their teenage years, animal cruelty, torturing, killing animals, setting fires. That, that's what David Berkowitz said over a thousand fires voyeurism peeping tom peeping into women's windows stealing underwear and then a criminal history 85 percent of serial killers have a criminal history okay damn. Most often causes warning signs of serial murder uh most serial killers are, are uh, most serial killers are male but the myth is ready for myth number eight people say well most of their victims are female Obviously, if they're male, we've seen the movies and, you know, we've met, we've seen Bundy and we've seen the Hillside Stranglers and we've seen these guys, but that's not true. Okay. Okay. It's more 50, 50. There's more John Wayne Gacy's than, you know, who kill boys and men. Gender of the victims, 53% are female, 47% are male. So ladies, you are the preferred victim, but not by much. 53% to 47%. What are the race of the victims? What race is most likely to be killed by a serial killer? 68% are white, 25% are black, 6% Hispanic, and 1% Asian. So white females are the most likely to be killed by a serial killer but not a, not a great majority. See if one of these countries has got a pure mental law where it's like nine kills makes you a serial killer, right? That would throw off the statistics a little bit, right? Right. Would, because this would. whole Asia situation is really weirding me out how they always seem to come in at the lowest of everything, okay? Right. Because there is some right. spicy yeah, yeah, your, stories. Your numbers are only as good as the people who are reporting, right? Like if they're not reporting them, yeah. and some, some countries might want like, let's say Russia, they might want to keep that number down. Yeah. You know, whatever. But here's the thing, Ron. People will look at us and they'll be like, oh my God, the United States, you got so many serial killers. And we look at China and Japan, we're like, oh my gosh, you got so many suicides. People not, they don't, they're not killing other people. They're just offing themselves in, in record numbers in, in China, in Japan. Yeah. So 
Uh, yeah, that, yeah, dude, that's got to be me mega, yeah, mega suppression. Mega yeah. suppression of real numbers. It has to be. Uh, Let's give you another one. Let's give him another one. Another myth. Okay, hang on. Just let, I, I think I can actually. I think I think I've got the knowledge to to answer this one for Matt Blackbeard. Um, go ahead, go ahead. What is a gang member or contract killer class if it, if 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 it's organized and it's still a cooling off between? It's the intention. So, for example, that's his day job. He, he may well kill people in the evening for free. That would make him a serial killer. But if his day job is collecting a paycheck and doing a job for someone, that's a completely different motive mindset uh, profile. Completely different, I would imagine, than a serial killer. Regardless of yeah, cooling you, off period. You gotta, a, you gotta imagine a serial killer, Ron, is just out hunting women yeah. for no reason at yeah. all because they, they want to rape they're, and kill they're, them. They're predators, Whereas mate. The contract killer has been paid, he's going yeah. to hunt someone, pop, and he goes home and has dinner. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, and it's the same with yeah. uh, gangs, it's the same with all of that. <laughs> It's, it's the same with yeah. all that. It, it literally just comes down to intent and narrative of the yeah, situation. A lot of gang members don't even target people. They just roll up and roll, roll up to a block and open fire and kill yeah. nine people, eight people, drive by shooting. There's not even really targeted victims, right? Yeah. Um, here's a good one. Myth number nine. Serial, serial killers prefer to kill people up close and personal. So back in the day, John Wayne Gacy, people like him, um, we thought they like to kill people up close and personal, but here's the new trend. And this is why it's important. And I'll tell you why serial killer methods of killing. Here they go. 43% of victims are shot. 22% are strangled. 15% are stabbed. 9% are bludgeoned. Ted Bunny with the log at Kyle Mega beating people to death. 6% are poisoned. Most of those are the nurses and the females. So you're twice as likely to be shot as you are strangled. Here's the problem. In the United States, we've got prostitutes, sex workers being shot in the head on the streets of Dallas. There's been three so far. Guess what the police are going to think? Wow, man, it's got to be drugs or gangs. Yeah, you know? of course. Uh, you know why, man? You know why, man? Because serial killers don't shoot people. Wrong. Well, this, uh, do you know it's 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 mad because that is like what seventy eight percent of all serial killings are up close and personal. Then it's just this; right. it's under twenty five percent. Forty three percent, almost half of them shoot people. So, like, oh, um, 40, well, I live sorry, sorry, forty three percent. Yeah, forty three percent shoot people. I thought you That's said what I'm saying twice as much oh. as strangling, which is twenty two percent. Yeah, sorry, I thought you said stabbing yeah. is fifteen percent. Yeah. So, um, I, I I just moved from Florida. We had a guy, when the people got off the bus in Tampa, he would walk up and shoot him in the head and walk away. No sex, no, no robbery, just walk up and shoot him in the head and walk away. Probably angry at society. We had a guy shooting men down in Fort Lauderdale. He shot three or four men, killed him, shot him in the head. He took his finger, put, dipped it in their blood. He wrote messages on the sidewalk to the police. I'm going to predict none of our listeners have ever heard of the serial killer in Tampa or Fort Lauderdale in the last two years. And I'll tell you why, because they were black males and they used a gun. It is the new profile. Okay. I'm, I'm just flabbergasted that the, the, the your like your opinion and your opinions are pretty fucking educated is that serial killers are white and they don't shoot people of, of, law enforcement of the public of this this false narrative that the media has portrayed like if there's just people driving up to hookers shoot them in the face like yeah somebody gets blamed on drugs or gangs or robbery or something like that that's crazy because the mentality is serial killers don't shoot people and they do well another reason is budget as well it's very easy to, to push those crimes to the side and not designate funds for right you know gangs drugs prostitutes all that stuff so if there was an unended but if there was unlimited budget i'm sure things would be totally different yeah let me just rattle off the last few stats oh. most serial killers commit murder for enjoyment either for lust sex power or thrill so the guy that was asking about the hitman Real serial killers kill for lust, sex, power, or thrill. Some kill for financial gain, but you got to really enjoy killing. It's got to be really your game is serial killer, but you know why you kill the old lady, you might as well take her money, right? Others kill because they're angry, racism, stuff like that. Top 10 states you can be killed by a serial killer in the U.S. 
Does, is your state in this list? We got 260 people watching. How cool is that? California is number one. Texas is number two. Here's the shocker. Florida is number three. The land of Mickey Mouse, number three. Illinois, can't believe that. It's not a very big state. Number four, why? I tell you, there's at least five serial killers stalking Chicago at any given time. New York is number five, simply because of New York City. In my home state, number six. Pennsylvania, number seven. Washington State, number eight. Michigan, number nine. And Georgia, number 10. Damn. I believe there are 50 to 100 active serial killers in the U.S. as we speak today. The FBI predicts 50. I think they're wrong on this one because I talked to a lot of them that are getting away with it. I think there's 100. Yeah, and if any of you happen to be watching, you can contact the show uh, at ron at survivinglife.tv and uh, come and join us one night and tell us what it's like to be a free serial killer. If uh, any of you are indeed watching, let us know. If you're an active serial killer, message me at Phil Chalmers TV at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I promise we will tell. Yeah, we definitely won't IP trace anything. Okay, so uh, going back to the. Hang on a second. I'm pretty sure there was another cop related. Oh, wait, while you look for questions, I just want to say again, all of you that are here, 265 of you, thank you so much for being here at the live. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for sharing it. I've got a lot of people that are messaging me, sharing it to their social media pages. That means so much, you guys. We want to get to 5,000. Uh, hopefully this week, and we want to get to 10,000 really soon. Yeah. And our goal is not that. We want to hit 100,000 and a million. That's really where we're headed. And yeah. uh, hopefully we're going to you know, grow this channel. I appreciate all of you sharing it, subscribing. A lot of you comment. You watch the videos as soon as they drop. And, and you know, uh, Ron and I are very appreciative. So thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah, absolutely we are. Uh, and there's a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot more to come. Uh, Phil's putting together some shorter courses for people who want to, because there's the education side, there is the the saving life side, but there is this massive um, community just on YouTube alone that is interested in the memorabilia side. They're interested in somebody like Phil telling the story of a killer that has something to show, their artwork, all the rest of it. <coughs> so if any of you are interested, there's going to be some of that happening uh, where you can kind of get a little bit closer and be able to ask more questions and all that kind of stuff. Makes a great gift, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all that stuff coming up. Um, so we'll keep you posted just on said they're a Patreon member. Um... Let's see, twelve step woman. Thank you so much. That's where you get all the crime. I scan crime scenes yep. and all kind of stuff that no one else gets to see. Uh, am, I, am I profiling any active cases? Says Ellie Rose. Here's the bad news: a lot of law enforcement doesn't reach out to me ahead of time. Um, they'll call me after they have unsolved cases, or yeah. maybe they, you know after it's solved or somebody's arrested and they want to know what I think. But I would love to work some on you know active cases, but I they. Everybody's so afraid of getting sued in the United States that they don't even try to, you've got to be like sworn law enforcement, FBI. Yeah. It's just, it's just the way the, the society works. Plus, today, plus, you know, you turn up at this crime scene, everything's going well. People start yeah. asking who the weird guy is behind you with the camera, with the long hair and the beard. And, you know, <laughs> it just all falls apart then. Do you know what I mean? We're vlogging you, here. So We're vlogging. Somebody said very educational. Thank you. Hey, somebody wants to know, do you think we've all bumped into a serial killer? Yes. 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 I do. I think in the United States, for sure, you've all bumped into at least one serial killer. Hell, they're Taco Bell managers, truck drivers. They work at restaurants. They live among you. They're your neighbors. Hell, BTK was installing uh, security alarms for ADT. Can you imagine that? Listen to this, Ron. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, the ADT guy's here. Come on in. His name tag. Oh, his name say, he says, his name. hi, Dennis. How are you? I'm so glad you're here, Dennis. We are so fucking shook by the BTK strangler. We need the system put in right away. You're talking to the BTK yeah. strangler. Yeah. Fucking... He's standing in your living room. Yeah, that's nah, not not. Let me nah. tell you another story. Delmas Colbin, serial killer, who's on the Delmas and Daisy show. He is uh, out west in Iowa, or Idaho, something like that, and he's parked in his truck. In a, in a, he's a, now you got to remember if you don't know Delmas Colbin, he's a really big, large, six foot, three hundred fifty pound black male, teddy bear, but he's a black male. Um, and a white guy comes up, knocks on his door, and says, "Hey, man, what are you doing out here?" And he says, "Ah, oh, there's no truck stops around here." And the white guy, and I'm saying that because it's interesting, it's white and black and, you know, people sometimes are. He says, come on, grab your stuff and come home with me. So Delmas grabs his clothes and his bag 
and he gets in a guy's truck. Now, both of them are crazy, right? The white guy doesn't know this trucker, and Delmas Colvin, the black guy, doesn't know this could be a serial killer crazy white guy. He gets his truck, goes to his house. This is crazy. Takes a shower, has dinner with the family, sits on the back porch, drinks beer, talks politics, talks sports. The guy takes him back to his truck. He drives back to where he lives in Toledo. He has a fiance. He's about to be married. Her name is Robin. Robin might be watching this. He drives back to Robin and, and he gets back and he says, Robin, you're not going to believe what happened. And by the way, Delmas is black and his fiance is white. So just kind of keep this going because you get the, the, the what's going on here. So he's telling Robin, he says, yeah, uh, you're not going to believe this. I met this guy. I, I really don't know him, but he took me to his house and he let me shower. We had dinner. We, we had we drank beer and she looked at him like this. Are you crazy? Delmas, are you crazy? He could have been a serial killer. <laughs> the fiance Robin is about to marry a serial killer. She lives with a serial killer. And she's worried that Delmas could have had lunch with or dinner with serial killer. Yeah. So that's the mentality. You can be real close to a serial killer and you don't know it. Because yeah. they don't act like serial killers. That's why. <laughs> I keep I keep saying like uh, the huge plot twist in the Netflix series of Phil's life will be that he's the serial killer, and that that's why he's so interested in killers from his state. Okay, they're all fall guys. I'm just calling it now. Um, so and Jamie got a good question. Um, you might want to Google this one, Ron. Okay, Jamie, Jamie, where the hell is this question at, Jamie? Hold on one second. It jumped around on my thing here. Jamie was asking if I ever interviewed a guy who got out of prison. He killed somebody, got out of prison, and killed his whole family. Can you find that in the chat, Ron? Gary Green or somebody like that? I lost your, your Gary question. Green. Okay. See if you see Jay. Oh, no. Yeah, just repost your question, man. Can you repost that? I don't see it. Somebody said, buying, torture, kill. Yep. Jesse Dotson. I know him, High Priestess. He's a... Um, uh, he's a dangerous, he's a, one of the most dangerous inmates, I think, in the United States, if that's the one I'm thinking of. Um, <laughs> somebody said they're obsessed. I love that. Thank you. Beasley. Uh, spoke to Kevin Ruby or Bobby Bostic. No, Danielle. Message me and tell me all about them if they fit the profile. Do you think serial killers on death row have a preferred method of execution? Uh, most of them are, are cowards and they prefer... Um, uh, lethal injection because it's painless. Okay. My ex tried to kill me too. That sucks. Damn, I can't find Jamie's question. It disappeared. Somebody said, I'd rather leave my house. I live in a small town. So if I talk to a serial killer, it's, it's been online. I'm sure a lot of them are online right now. Probably Tinder. Ah! The, lady that, the lady that texted, are you a serial killer? And he said no, and he killed her. He met her on Tinder. Oh, damn. Oh, man, like... Jamie, you got to repost your question, man. I, I just, I'm so sorry, man. These are popping fast. I yeah. can't see it. It was, oh, um, I think it was like Bobby Green or something. But if you go ahead and message me. Um, somebody hey, said, have you ever spoken with Todd Colehead yeah. many times? Todd's an Todd interesting Colehead one. will be on our show. Yeah, Todd, 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 Todd Colehead Todd's will be on our show. Because you know, he's, yeah. he's got some interesting twists in his story, right? Like he mm -hmm. does not agree with the Madia. But clearly, he started raping. He was a realtor and he started raping at a young age. And then one day, people disrespected him at this motorcycle shop. And he killed the whole shop, all four people, and got away with it. But he, 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 uh, he was killing, he killed men, right? And then he, he killed one. He killed, he killed, he killed employees. One. I think there was a woman and three men. Yeah. He killed the whole, every, all the employees of this motorcycle shop. He killed one, he killed one woman and the rest were men, right? And I th it's weird because then he kept that girl locked up in that yes. shipping container. And I, yeah. I, I was talking to uh, Mike from Bizarre Bizarre. He was on my Tuesday night show talking about yep. this. And it's, 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 it feels like in his mind, it's totally fine to keep a woman locked up in a, in a container because he doesn't like killing women. Mm. You see what I mean? So yeah. I don't well, think- he said he, raped, he, he, he had raped her and I, I think he was planning to kill her. Um, yeah. What something happened though, I, I should know this, but how, I don't remember how he got caught. How but something recently, happened. They, they went and saved that lady. How recently so that was, have you spoken to him? I, I speak to him all the time. Yeah, I'm. I would be really interested to hear what yeah, has. Get on the show. We can get yeah. on the show. Hey, we're about to interview somebody who killed a serial killer. Two people. 
We're about to interview two people who killed a serial killer. That'll be cool, right? Real a serial cool. killer who killed a serial killer. Yeah. I'll give you a hint. One of them is Jeffrey Dahmer. And one of them is Gerald Schaefer. There you go. That's all I'm going to say. Heavyweight Y'all names. Gonna have Google. Google, um, Google, Google. But yeah, nah, I mean... Gary Green. Cynthia Becker said Gary Green. That's it. Just in case you are a serial killer who's watching, don't, don't go and kill any other serial killers. Just sit down and have a <laughs> polite conversation. Work it out. Do you know what I mean? Like, just use your words, okay? Use your hey, words. Could you, could you, uh, Ron, could you Google Gary Green family killer? See if uh, that comes uh, up. Absolutely can. Yeah, Chris Scarver. He doesn't talk to nobody. Gary Trust Green. Me. Uh, oh, yeah, Gary Green. This is the river killer. No, what is it? River killer. The, ri- the river killer, Gary Green. Where's the, what country is he from? Oh, no, that's Gary Ridgway. What, what did you say? Uh, Gary, Gary Green. Gary Green. I was going to say that's Gary Ridgway. And what was Gary Green's like killer name? Was it his family? The guy said Jamie said serial I'm not, I'm male killer. or female. Sorry. Okay, let's have a look. Gary Green. Uh, it keeps bringing up Gary Ridgway. It's obsessed with it. Can you message me on Gary Green and let me know about it? And if it fits what we're doing, I'll yeah. go after him. Yeah. And by the way, anytime you guys want me to interview a serial killer, throw it in the comments. The chat is so hard to see; it's moving fast. Throw it in the comments of the videos on my page, and I read those. And if it's if you mention a serial killer like Gary Green, I've never heard of. I'm gonna go after him, for yeah. sure. Well, just to let you yes. know how popping off your side chat is. Oh, Jamie the... said I'm a chick. I, I knew when I said it was he, Jamie. I knew, I knew. Yeah, I knew you were a female. Phil, yeah, you're, you're you're finding it hard to keep up with the chat. Just to let you know how many people are talking. Like your chat is set, yes. your chat is set to slow chat, so that people can only comment like once every thirty seconds. Uh, just to show you okay. just how much information is being thrown at you, mate. Um, so, Someone else said Gary Glitter. So if whatever that name is, message me. Jamie, I apologize. You are a female. Somebody said, look up Kevin Roby. Again, Danielle, throw it in the, the comments or message me, and um, I'll look them up. And if it sounds interesting, we're going to talk to him. Oh, there's this really cool guy I'm going to interview. Listen to this. On Halloween night, he put on a wolf mask and killed his wife Okay. on Halloween night. He left her body in the house, put on the wolf mask, and served candy all night to the children. Oh. In the same wolf mask he killed his wife in. So that we're gonna to talk to that guy. He's at San Quentin Death Row in California. Um, okay, I got it. so there is a Kevin Roby, aka Satanic Christ. Kevin is diagnosed with schizophrenic in California prison for murdering his sister in an occult ritual. Is that the guy? That sounds like that would be somebody they want me to talk to, yes. Yeah, okay. Spicy. Right, you know, message me that, keep that on our thing. I think somebody said the Welsh Ripper. I don't know why, but the Ripper name always gets me when I hear the Ripper. Yeah, that's an that's a really aggressive well, here's, name. Here's an interesting one for you, Phil. Right? Let's see. Uh, Jamie, over, Cox, what up? Over the next few months, if people are interested in maybe you diversifying and interviewing some people, not maybe not necessarily um, it, on the path that you're on now, maybe mass killers or somebody who. Yeah, I do that. no, no, I do that. I yeah, do that. Um, Man, we. We have we have a mass murder coming up on our show soon. On yeah, our, all on right, our okay, nice. Our channel, right? Yeah. Um, that, somebody just said, if if they're not serial killers, will you interview them? Yes. Somebody said, David Parker Ray. Hey, Jack, want to hear something cool? His girlfriend Cynthia texts me all the time. Oh man, she wants she, to, she wants to do an interview. She, she wants to do an interview. So you, we're hoping you, to. Yeah, you need to hook her. that up because she yeah. got off. Yes, lightly. she's out. Yeah, she's out. Yeah, like she lived there. She lived there, right? She stayed with them sometime. Yes, oh, she in stayed his with bed. Sometime. Yeah. yeah, sure. I'm sure because yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. She wasn't with them the whole time. But she was with them sometime. Yeah, I'm sure she was. Spicy, spicy, <laughs> spicy. Israel Keys is dead, but that's one of the most interesting serial killer you know, cases. Israel do, Keys. Do, yes. Do, do you know what? I, I'm telling you. I think what we need to do is do a toolbox killer series that we could that ends up with live chat possibly if you can arrange it with his ex-girlfriend and we we educate people on the whole situation because that is such a brutal case where there's so many different avenues there's so many different things to look at like even just who were his friends who were his friends i want to say something to you all of you 275 people that are on here right now everybody who watches this what i do is very expensive okay 
There's a reason a lot of people don't do this because it's very, very expensive. It costs a lot of money to do what I do. That is why I have a Patreon page. That is why we will be looking for you guys to help donate. Sure. Costs a lot of money to interview these killers. For example, Ron, I'll just throw this out there so y'all know what I'm dealing with. Cynthia wants $5,000 to talk to me. To tell her story. So do I pay that much? No, but um, most guys, they want something. They're psychopaths. They don't talk for free. Oh, hey. If they talk for free, there'd be there'd be 500 Phil Chalmers. Okay, let me let me just put it to the public. Okay, if it came down to the crunch that we were going to pay five thousand dollars, okay, would you guys be willing to watch a documentary made on another website platform that we sold tickets? To the live event for and then the 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 version that we would put on youtube would be cut right back and then that would be made available to patreons for those who may miss the main event so that keeps the part where phil is shipping out a lot of money safe from bastards that are going to steal it for their content on youtube it allows us to premiere it like a movie where if you want to come and view it you can pay um a few dollars to come and watch the premiere and again if you're on patreon wait a couple of days until the premiere is over and it'll be it will be the full version that will be there something like that is how you fund a video with a five thousand dollar budget when you have if you've got less subscribers than the dollar amount of the budget of your video chances are you're going to need to you know monetize it in some way so just to let you guys know that's not a money grab okay like if there's if it has to happen a way like that that's how it will have to happen uh, because like, I'm just saying it's just, it can't be done unless it's done that way. But that will break the internet, Phil. Like, like, like Christopher Scarver, who killed Jeffrey Dahmer, he wants 20000 Now, I'm not saying I pay that, but that's just the kind of money people are. For me to do what I do, Ron, to talk to four killers a month, it costs me two to 3000 a month. All right. Okay. People, we're going to be diversifying the it's fucking it's content. Just, just, so just, I, I guess what I'm saying is if you all can sign up for my Patreon, it's yeah. 10 bucks a month. Yeah. You probably... would help me. That would help me get better interviews, bigger names. Yeah. And you're going to say, like, some of these people will never talk. You'll never, if I don't do it, nobody's going to talk to Chris Scarver. Nobody's going to talk to Cynthia Hendy. Nobody. Well, I tell you what, you're knowing the, the hard realities in more detail there, because I just learned that the, the same as you guys. So you might see one, inter you, you, we're going to have to do something where the interview series uh, are maybe not treated the same way as the other content so you might have a 20 minute interview i might splice in news reports i might splice in parts where we look at the part in history that they're referring to to bulk right. it out into something bigger and make it more of an event um simply because that's a shit ton of overhead it is that's a and, shit and, ton and of I overhead i want to re remind all the people here that are on 272 of you um here's the thing if you know anything about me, if you don't know me, you've just stumbled across this. I am true. I, I'm not, I'm a, I'm not a true crime fan because I'm not a fan of people who kill people, especially children and, and women and stuff. I'm a fan of finding out why these guys do what they do. I'm a fan of solving cold cases. I'm a fan of finding bodies and remains, and I'm a fan of bringing closure to victims families. If you want to help me invest in that, because every time I do an interview, I always ask him and you can hear Ron gets the rough cuts of my interviews. Yep. Tell me something you never told anybody else. How many unsolved cases do you have? Terry Blair, six. Holy shit. Yeah. When's he going to tell me? When I get more money. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah, that is how it works. But you want to help me bring closure to hurting families. Your $10 a month, not only do you get rad-ass content on my uh, Patreon, uh, crime scenes, uncut interviews for my podcast. Uh, by the way, Where the Bodies Are Buried podcast drops on May, March 10th, yeah. season two. But you get you get you get all the stuff that I do here, my paintings, my drawings. Listen, I go and scan this stuff. You get on, you you download it, and you can frame it. And guess what? You have the same collection I have. Ron didn't know if this is a real painting or a scan. He doesn't know. He won't know if it's on a frame. Yeah. The original. You have a scan. Who's going to know the difference? See, it's Anthony Sewell's painting. Here's here's the conundrum, right? It's like. Painkillers doing all this stuff, right? See if the police were interested and they were in there doing this investigating cold cases, there wouldn't be a need to pay them to do it. So it's one of these situations where do you pay the person to close the case? 
okay? Because that's the conundrum that you're in. It's not, we're not paying the for police, content. The, the police do it all the time, Ron. The police pay killers to close cases. Oh, they I'm do. sure they do, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure their budget runs out at some point, And that's right, why we're here. Police do it. Law enforcement does it. Okay. So I try to do it a lot cheaper. Yeah. Sometimes, the, you know what some of the guys will say? Um, I just need a TV. It's 200 bucks. And let me, I always ask, I always say this. Let's ask the victim's families. Would they be happy that I bought a TV for an inmate to find out where their daughter is? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Yes. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I'm paying, it. I'm paying it out of my own money. But it's that important to me. I wish I can get away with just $200 on every confession. It's usually not. It's yeah. thousands. That's what we do. So yeah, that's 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 the, that's the side of the coin. Just to let everybody understand. Um, yeah, I'm not out here doing this to make money. I'm doing it to just cover my expenses. That's why I have a Patreon. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, none of it goes to me, man. It, it like we say, I, I, films... you know, do you know how much phone call? Do you know how much, Can you imagine the amount of money I have in mail, phone calls? Um, yeah, just paying for all their emails, their phone calls. I mean, it is just it's out. It's out. And you've got you've got to remember as well. This is the off season for Phil. Phil's usually touring. That's you know he ed he does his um his training courses for law enforcement. COVID, as you can imagine, has eliminated all most of that. So that is why um you know he, we've got him here now because he has the time to do this because he's not currently touring, uh, doing what he usually does. And uh, yeah, a hundred percent. When you were still running your Patreon last year and before COVID, that was your budget for doing your work was your Patreon because your life and everything's covered by your touring. So I'm just getting ahead of bitchy comments. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I'm not worried either, but I like to just throw things out there. Yeah. To show, to show people yeah, that we're not oblivious. They know why I have a Patreon page because people are like, oh my God, this guy's just making money. Yeah. I wish. I'm losing a lot of money every month if you think I'm getting rich off this. Trust me, I'm losing a lot of money. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. She <laughs> will. Um, yeah, 12 step woman, yes, I have to pay for their phone calls. Absolutely. I have to pay for their mail. So what I have to do is put money on their books so they have the money to pay for their phone calls to call me. I have to pay for their the money in their books so they can buy stamps and envelopes and, and send me letters. Um, yes, yes, I do. That's part of the deal. Most of the inmates are completely 100% broke. I believe there's oh. an old an old saying, Phil, <clears throat> there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, all right? It it's literally boils down to that, that man. There's no such thing as a free confession because if that was the case, guys, there'd be 500 people doing what I'm doing, gathering confessions all over the world, also, and it's not happening. We're talking about happening. people who, on the outside, were addicted to control to the point where they wanted to kill people. This is like their version of serial killing in jail, I would imagine, bleeding out information, yeah. getting what they yeah. can. It is like their yeah. last power trip, I would imagine. And who cares how it's defined? We're talking about closure yeah. and... It's Ellie wild. Rose has a good question. After all the years, do the prisoners talk to each other about you? Yes. Especially at San Quentin's death row. They talk about me a lot. Um, thank you so much, Tommy. I appreciate that. Have you ever come across a serial killer targeting people because of their political beliefs? Uh, there's occasionally people like that. Yes. More, more racist than anything, but there is some political stuff. It's, yeah. it's rare, but it, it's out there. Uh, thanks for posting the Patreon. I appreciate that. It's my friends are monsters fan club dot com. My friends are monsters fan club dot com. Ten bucks a month, you could cancel anytime. And you've uh, you've already had Delmas confess to some bodies, right? Yeah, Delmas has confessed, and we're looking for bodies with Delmas Colvin. Clyde Gibson has confessed. In fact, Ron and I are about to drop a video that's going to blow your socks off. You guys, when you're about to hear here on this channel. Yeah, even Ron will tell you. Like the Whoa. stuff, the stuff that's been going out oh at the gosh. moment. The stuff, stuff he just told us this week. Yeah, this yeah, the stuff that's been coming out for the first basically month. We're coming at the end of the first month, right? This has been so you guys get an understanding of what Phil does, and just so the the ball is rolling, so you know what what is actually coming. And right. you know the way that I like to deliver content, and you can see the extent of Phil's work. And now we're coming to the sort of first era of taking what Phil's done and turning it into a larger project that includes either a series and a live show, and give you a feel for 
that depth of a dive into someone where you know we will look at the serial killer and the past we'll look at the 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 times that you've talked to them before the confessions and then we'll move into the the live interviews and things like this because i think the way that it's delivered is just as important as the information when it comes to viewing it for sure we're going to do a video pretty soon ron and i uh we're going to do the 10 myths of serial killers we're also going to do why teens kill i think a lot of people want that information like the what do kids kill what are the warning signs triggers what can parents learn so we're going to put out a couple really cool videos where i'm not doing an interview but just giving just it'll be like classroom like a class you're going to take lectures lectures with phil it'll be a lecture yeah lecture with phil um have you ever talked have you talked to serial killer about keeping you safe I'm not sure what you mean by that, Chrissy. Have I talked to a serial killer about keeping me safe? Um, I'm never really, I don't really feel unsafe, even on death row. So I'm never really worried about that. Um, when I go and see some of the inmates, they lock me in a cell with them. So that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds um, like a lot of fun. Uh, well, I, have be, I have to be careful out on the street here. Um, I have to be real careful on the street. Like they know, they know where I pick up my mail and stuff. So I got to be careful with that. So basically, I don't piss anybody off. I try not to. Yeah, and that's a good lesson, oh, especially. Wait, wait, wait. I can't tell you the name, Ram. Listen to this. There are people out here that rip serial killers off in prison. What? Like, like they'll cut a deal with them and say, send me a couple of your pictures or send me a couple letters and, and I'll send you some money. And the, the, and the serial killer sends them letters and they don't send it. And the serial killers are upset at them. I'm like, why would you I, even? I wouldn't do that. That's yeah. just me. Do you know, it just takes one mad shift in politics and for some people to be like, right, right. we're, we're going we're yeah. to shorten sentences so you can never be in prison longer than like 22 years. All those serial killers have got ripped off. They're, they're hungry and coming for their, they're coming for what's owed to them. I'm just saying. Uh, what do I think about honor killings? You know, they're killings. Killings are killings. Yeah, it's terrible. Jack says, what do you think about violent video games and porn? Um, violent video games does inspire some teen killers and school shooters. Porn... Definitely has inspired some serial killers, but obviously we can't say if you play video games and you look at porn, you're going to kill people. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not touching that one. Does it inspire some people? Yes. Yeah, I'm not. We've not got long enough left in tonight's show for the heated debate between Phil and Ron about violent video games. People can say say the Bible has inspired killers too, so you got to be careful what you do there. Um, But really, Ron, um, you're an adult. We're talking about 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds playing Grand Theft Auto. 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds. Should not have I'm access sure to these games. It's the parents that no, are I giving know. them. Unfortunately, they do, though. That's the problem, Ron. They do. It's because of the parents. Um, I know. Okay. Well, some of these people don't have parents. They're terrible. Well, where the fuck are they getting what the game about to say? Kenneth Bianca, any contact with him? Uh, I talked to him once, the Hillside Strangler. He's kind of a little bit private. He, we, him and I don't really talk now. Um, so somebody said, sell the artwork and letters. That's <laughs> funny. I don't sell my stuff. I try not to. I really try not to. Um, yeah, I like cool. to, I, 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 someday I'm going to open a museum and that's why I keep it. Yeah, too right, too right. And I heard would you, I heard you say the other day that women were asking that's a good question. Some, uh, she says, Would it be cheaper if women were asking instead of man? Um, I think it doesn't matter if you're a female or male asking them. Um, most of them, most of them, number one, are never going to talk about their crimes. That's a problem. I try to get them to talk, like Madison wouldn't talk about his crimes. But I don't yeah. think it differs. But I think women, if you play the sexy game, you might get them to talk to you a little bit. Uh, there's the somebody that did that game. with the toolbox killers. But... <laughs> no, oh no, elaborate on the the definition of sexy game. As I, like, listen, you're 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 six hours into your professional training of law <laughs> enforcement, and you reach the section on the se- hit us with that. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a little yeah, bit I'm of flirting sexy, so will go. I don't have that possibility. It will go a long way, you think, with the with the female killers. That's an interesting one. Well, so listen, there's been a lot of females that have worked serial killers like Charles Manson, and uh, he's not a serial killer, but Charles Manson and the Gainesville Ripper and all these guys, and they've gotten them to talk and write books of them and stuff. And I'm just they saying, you, might, yeah, you, you, might, you yeah. might get that 20 grand interview knocked down to five grand if Wendy's asking the questions. All I'm Maybe. saying, all I'm saying, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy, if you're watching right now, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> uh, I apologize. <laughs> I appreciate Yes, there are websites you can go and buy paintings and letters and envelopes. Yes. Damn. What are your thoughts on Chris Watts? Oh, Chris Watts is a family annihilator. He looks uh, like a very normal guy, and he is uh, not responding to me because he's getting a million letters from women that want him and want to marry him, and they're sending nude photos and marriage proposals. 
What? And he's got a lot of money. Yeah, he's, he's a sorry, big... I'm sorry, who's this guy? Chris Watts. It was on the, there was a TV special on Netflix about Chris Watts. Killed his whole family. My boyfriend just told me he was hit in the head by a swing when he was a kid. Ashley, <laughs> very careful of your boyfriend. <laughs> If, he starts, if he's wetting the bed, setting fires and throwing yeah. the dog around yeah. the room, run! Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> run. <laughs> it's wet in the bed. <laughs> I'm setting fires around the house. Run. That's fucking close. What, uh, so, what is that, Ron? It, oh, somebody man. said serial killers get anti psychotica. Psycho, what is that? I never heard of that. I have no idea. I imagine... Explain what that is. I don't have time to Google it right oh now. Oh my God. Right. Hang on a somebody second. Said, somebody said F Chris Watts. A lot of people feel that way. I'm just looking up Chris Watts just now. Like what is he's Chris Watts. I like keeping up with the chat now. This is cool. <clears throat> yeah. 85 years of murder. murder of his pro oh, oh, shit. Girls think he's hot. oh, I know this guy. I yeah, know Chris this Watt. guy. Chris Watts? I know this guy. What a dickhead. Killed his little girls. Dickhead. Oh. He's threw him, getting, in a, threw him in an oil tank. How bad is that? Oh, what a piece of shit. And you're saying he's getting a whole bunch of freaking thirsty oh bitches. Oh, my gosh. She's inundated with sexy letters thirsty and new bitches. proposals, marriage proposals. Yes. Women, ladies, yes. ladies, ladies, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay? <laughs> what is wrong with all of you that a percentage of you are frothing at the freaking area over these people? That was the most. I I, I edited out so much Scottish from that sentence there. So I appreciate it, America, because that you're right, you guys. You kill your own children, man. You're one. That's wild. Phil Chalmers, I'll be your wingman. I like that. <clears throat> I'll drive the price down. I can play the sexy game. <laughs> so I got to get some of the late. I got to get some of the fans on the YouTube channel helping me send sexy letters, trying oh, to get confession. I can, I can, I can think of a couple That's of people. I can, think, <laughs> I can think of a couple of people right off the bat that would uh, work it for shizzle. Oh, why? Do, why do these women have? Why do they? Why do circles have women sending them love letters? Uh, so do school shooters. So do mass murderers. Uh, the kid down in Parkland, Florida, is inundated with the same kind of mail. It's just wild. Um, People want to be with a celebrity and they can't get with Brad Pitt or anybody else like that, or Chris Rock <laughs> or any of those. So they go for the people where they, they know where they live. They know where they live. They got their address online. So what we thought so they go after a famous killer. So they're thirsty clout chasing bitches. That's what you're yes. saying. Thirsty yes. clout chasers. Yes. You're all bonkers, ladies. I'm telling you, we'll see We'll see how long those marriages last when the new guy comes in and the mandatory sentences come in and they're all released coming to smash that fucking goddamn wedding night into and oblivion. There's, there's another one. It. And this is another reason why a young lady says she, I think it's a young lady, uh, many women think they're going to change them. It, there is an aspect of that too. So it's like they want to be with somebody famous. <sighs> now listen, guys, let me give you an idea. Charles Manson's body was worth a million dollars. So let's say you you're 25, you look good, you oh say, "Hey God. Charlie, I want to marry you. I think you're the greatest. I love you. I'll come visit you every day. I want to marry you." You marry Charles Manson. He leaves you in his will and he dies. You take his body. You sell it to someone for a million dollars. Oh no, you cut it up into little bits and sell each bit for a million dollars. Do you know with a sort well, of you, certificate what they really of did, the truth is what they really did, Ron, is they cremated him. Oh. And they, they dumped some of his ashes and they sold some of yeah, his that's ashes. That's a way, way less messy way than Ron. You would come in, you'd be like, oh, hey, we got the body, Ron. We got the body. And Ron, you'd go, I think, the, I think you're the 14th serial killer in Scotland. <laughs> I'm just saying, you and Wendy nip out to Starbucks and you come back and there's me sawing this thing up. Oh, no, no, Ron. We're just going to sell the ashes. Oh, okay. No problem. <laughs> Fucking Ron. Ron. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's dial this back. Ron's fanboying oh, out way gosh. too much here. It's somebody somebody doesn't like Charles Manson. Do I think Manson killed anyone? Man, I would say at least, kill, I, I think he killed at least one person, but it's never been really documented. You know, but there's some talk about him at least killing one. Yeah. Listen, um, we learned about a case out in Japan on a cult, Friday. He's more of a cult, though. Yeah, we learned of a case on Friday from Aiko out in Japan that was of a guy who manipulated a whole family to come and live with him. 
and then through torture, basically got the father to torture his own daughters under the pretext that he would do it worse sort of thing, to the point where the 10 year old daughter had to dismember her own father and then was threatened with like her own dad's fucking soup that this guy had made on. And it's, it's so insane because there is definitely, and when we look at Manson and we look at the, the, the section of, 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 of killers that want to have yeah. control over someone to make them do it is yep. it's, i think that could be the most fascinating subsection of killer to me is the ones who who are the puppet who are legitimate murder puppet masters if that makes sense asha castle thank you asha pillar she just joined my patreon thank oh, you oh nice it's nice if, yeah, if, I think it's from the UK, maybe. I'd, awesome. If it's, if it's, I'd love to see a lot more of you do that to help us out. We want to get uh, enough that we can keep popping these interviews for you guys. You want some crazy interviews, confessions? We have to go look for bodies now. Yeah. Uh, Gibson, Gibson's given us locations for bodies here soon, so yep. we have to go look for bodies. That's expensive, man. Yeah. It really is. And if we hit 100 million p- patrons at $10 a month, we will get an Avengers style spaceship for Phil to do his work from okay it'll be amazing we just want to, we just want to get 200 10 bucks a month that would be able to we yep. could do we could do some work then you know yeah, we could yeah we're yeah. really good hey ron um i am boiling hot i'm gonna jump off here That's i hope right, you all right? had a good yeah, time absolutely. tonight. i hope you all learned something tonight yeah well uh, i'm we gonna scan do. everything i talked about tonight put it in my patreon tomorrow morning no problem uh, i'm gonna make a video about the serial killer miss and i'm gonna make a video about uh, anthony sowell the cleveland strangler you'll get to see those Ron's dropping content this week. We got lots going on. Yeah, what, what are you dropping this week, Ron? We, we got interviews. I, we got. I can't. I can't remember the names. Videos. I can't remember the names. No, it's. Um, I think it's two history videos and, a, and an interview. So two Ooh, we got some content. Dropping. Yeah, there, there's some content coming. Um, but yeah, like I say, there's going to be news. There'll be a trailer put up for whatever. It won't be Serial Sundays. It will be something else, um, right. and we'll be we'll be working something else. We may also do the occasional Serial Sunday special over on my channel with Phil, and uh, just to sort of broaden the audience a little, because um, we've uh, we've I think we've only really done one thing on my channel, right? But we're, yeah, because uh, that we, we jumped hey, straight. 250, 270 people stopping in. Yeah, I know you guys want these lives. Uh, we'll keep doing them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, listen, thank you, everyone. I will be back on Discord tomorrow. Uh, I've been taking a few days off, uh, rattling through fucking admin paperwork and getting uh, as much editing as I can possibly get done. Uh, Rachel's doing a a little bit worse. Um, She had a a, a temporary cap put on a tooth. She's now having to go and get root canal surgery. Uh, She's still in a lot of pain. So we're still juggling things at this end. And I'll keep you all posted. But thank you, everyone, for your support, as always. Thank you to the mods. Thank you. Thank uh, you. uh, All the mod team, as always. Thanks for all the positive comments. And we'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, we appreciate all your support. And we'll see you. God bless you. I'll be safe. Stay alive. Peace. Yeah, stay alive. Most of all, stay alive. That's most important. If the only thing you take from this is that, then great. And we'll see you in the next one. Go to sleep tonight with the image of Ron cutting off Charles Manson's leg. God bless you all and good night. Uh, Why, though? Why? Bad, Phil. Right, hang on. Where's the outro music, Phil? You throw me off. Right, there we go. And then we do this.